they're fighting against the overwhelming power of the USA to extradite people from this country. But that's really part of a much wider mosaic of everything that goes on. And uh, I came here this morning to support those that are faced with extradition without any trial, without any process, without any accusation, without any conviction from this country. It shows the relationship between Britain and the USA. But a few minutes ago we also had what is actually a very important legal victory here of, again, people who felt they were under the cosh, who were under the cosh. That was the victims of the Mau Mau War in Kenya in the 1950s. We were told lies then, as a child growing up in Britain. I was told lies by the media then. I was told that every European in Kenya was being killed by these terrible Mau Mau fighters. The truth was, tragically, 32 Europeans died. The truth was, more than 12,000 Mau Mau fighters were killed by the British Army. And it's also true, which we were not told at the time, that Britain used concentration camps, torture, castration, humiliation, imprisonment of children, abuse of people throughout that whole period. That was the British Army in operation. And the British government, all of them, hid the information for more than 40 years in stores all around the country. And the, because the people in Kenya fought so hard for so long, they got the information out, they got the truth, and the case will now go to a full trial. In reality, a trial of British colonial activities there. Take heart and take inspiration from the fight back of the Kenyan people to get justice for what they suffered in the 1950s. Take heart from those around the world that fight back against imperialism, colonialism and injustice all around the world. I've been in Parliament throughout the whole period of the War on Terror. Straight after 9-11, immediately, the US passed two very important acts. One was to give almost complete power to the President, Bush at that time, to do whatever they felt necessary to prosecute the War on Terror. One member of Congress, one, Barbara Lee of California, voted against it. All the others, all 494 of them, voted for it. Who was right? Barbara Lee or the other 494? Who can hold her head up now? Hi, Barbara Lee, because she stood against it. Then the Department of Homeland Security came along, and then the extradition laws with Britain. We passed our own anti-terror legislation, which allowed executive detention and executive control. You win back by fighting back. You win back by arguing back. You win back by not allowing the US to have complete power over our judicial system. It shows the abusive relationship between Britain and the USA. People that have been in prison in this country, charged with nothing, tried for nothing, convicted of nothing, but imprisoned for nothing. Now to be extradited, possibly, to the USA. Stand firm for justice. Stand firm against extradition to the USA. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. Our next speaker, again, needs this introduction. Someone who can tell us a little bit about the insight of being incarcerated. Let me introduce you to Brother Mozambique. Thank the court here is making the judgment not just on Barbara Ahmed, not just on Salah Ahsan, not just on the three others who collectively have spent over 45 years detained in British prisons without charge or trial. They are making a judgment on the home of the Muslim community in Britain. They are saying, and throwing down a gauntlet in front of us and saying, this is what we're capable of, what are you going to do about it? This is what they're telling us. They're saying, we are now opening a floodgate, and from this point onwards, anybody and everybody can be sent under this extradition treaty, and there's nothing you can do about it. Because Barbara Ahmed and Salah Ahsan and the others have exhausted the legal process, taking it to the very highest courts of the land and further. 
and still come out with nothing except the plane and taking them to some of the most notorious prisons in the world. Inside AZ Explorers, they are potentially going to be spending the rest of their lives in solitary confinement, where they will spend 23 hours a day locked up, where they will not have any meaningful communication with their families. And how will their families, who sought forth so valiantly over the past years, be able to go and visit them? The old men and the old women, whose tears have dried up, fighting for the rights of their children. What will the family of Khalid al-Fawaz and Ab Adil Abdul Bari, whose names haven't been mentioned, how will his children grow up in this country, all who are British citizens? Who will pay the price for the scars that they carry for the rest of their lives? The United Kingdom has already been found guilty in our eyes of complicity in torture in the case of the Guantanamo prisoners, in the case of people that they handed over to the Libyans and others, and now they are, instead of stopping the extradition, handing people over to be tortured. And let me be clear, the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture said that the places where these men are going to be sent now are in fact, are in fact the place where it is tantamount to torture because of the isolated nature of their incarceration. And this is the Special Rapporteur of the United Nations on Torture, who was himself a torture survivor. So this is Britain, not in uh, 1998, not in 2005, just after the J July 7th bombings. This is 2012, where Britain is implementing a US policy, where Britain simply has no sovereignty when it comes to the issue of its Muslim citizens. And let's also be clear, because this is what it's about for now. But as I said, the floodgates will open for others. Five, British, five people held in British uh, prisons are about to be extradited today on a transport, perhaps a military transport plane. And once that happens, once they're sent over, this will be a page that we will never forget in the history of this country. A dark page, a black page, one that is a stain on what Britain claims itself to be. But at a time when Britain should have been running for cover and thinking of a way to stop people despising its policy, after they've been caught, being involved and complicit in torture, they're doing it once more. So with us, with our voices, though there are a few of us here, let's say it strong and let's say it powerfully and let's say that we will never forget Barbara Ahmed, we will never forget Salah Hassan, we will never forget all of the other five in fact, because all have been detained without charge or trial. Every single one of them, 40 years plus without charge or trial. Free Barbara Ahmed! Free Baba Ahmed! Free Salah Hassan! Free Baba Ahmed! Free Baba Ahmed! Free Salah Hassan! Free Salah Hassan!